Good morning. I'm Jim Moore, and you are watching Words of Encouragement, program number 430. Glad to have you with me this morning. Coming to you from the Mobile Command Center, somewhere located in the central part of the United States. Yes, I'm saying all that to sound mysterious. So today is a new day, and I pray that you're having a good morning today. Uh, regardless of any kind of difficult circumstances you might be facing today. And uh, I've got some friends of mine and uh, people that watch the program who are having some of those. So I want to be able to pray for them today. And uh, But I'm going to take a minute uh, to see, um, see if anybody comes on. So uh, we are in the middle of a big uh, time change. And anytime you make a change like this, after a long period of doing something a certain way, the likelihood that you are going to throw some people off is pretty, um, you know, pretty normal. And so uh, I, I expect that I, you know, have people uh, <clears throat> expecting us to come on at eight o'clock and, um, and here we are now, we're early. So if you missed uh, seeing this live, and I had one person contact me and said, man, I'm going to have to change my whole schedule around just, and I was like, wow, well, Thank the Lord they want to watch it live, but you don't have to do that. Love to be able to interact with you. Love to be able to talk to you and with you on the program as much as I'm able to uh, focus on what's being said by people's comments, which isn't, I'm not very good at, honestly. But <clears throat> anyway, so today is um, the starting of that, and we're doing it a little more central time so that I don't wind up spending uh, right in the middle of the chunk of the day trying to do this. So trying to get it a little bit more balanced for everyone. So a little earlier for West Coast, a little later for East Coast, and Central Time kind of right in the middle. So, so here we are today. So I want to talk today about something maybe just a little bit unusual, a little bit different. Uh, there are some Bible verses that I put down uh, to... Um, <clears throat> how would I say, to verify uh, what I want to talk about today. But it's interesting. I, I know that some people would, would look at the last two days and go, wow, he's really got this on his mind. And, and it's, it's not true. What I have had on my mind the last two days, honestly, mostly, is uh, putting together uh, Ikea uh, furniture. Hi, Scott. God bless you, brother. So, um, yeah, so I'm not, my mindset has not been... <laughs> in uh, the end days or anything like that, although I'm always living in a place where I where I feel like, you know, we're living in the end days and so on. But I want to talk about having a contingency plan today. I want to talk about what that looks like. I want to talk about some practical steps that you can take. Now, I'm not an expert in this field. Uh, I'm not someone that ha I haven't done a huge amount of study on the issue. <clears throat> Hi, Teresa. God bless you. <clears throat> But I do believe that God is a God of preparation. Again, we who are, especially those of us in the body of Christ who are spirit-led people, we consider that we are do our best to be led by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we can drift over into the place where we think any kind of preparation, any kind of uh, contingency planning. So just to define the word contingency, that means uh, when you have a contingency plan, that means you plan for something happening other than what is normally expected. So the unexpected, of course, our minds turn to weather, economic issues, da da da. They're usually bad things, but they could be good things too. Some people don't have a plan for if they suddenly get a large amount of money, and so they don't know what to do. Now that would be kind of a nice contingency plan to have, but really, most of the time, it's going to be for some difficult thing that's happened. So. The vast majority of people do not have a contingency plan for difficult times to come. And it's not unbiblical. It's not unwise. It's not fear. Now, you can make a uh, contingency plan. You can uh, plan for some kind of difficult times out of fear, for sure. Often, people will get fearful about what they <clears throat> perceive might be coming down the road, and they act in fear. The Lord does never wants us to do fear will always lead you to do the wrong thing, and you don't want to do that. So what the first step in your contingency planning is that I need to believe that it's right, that it's okay with God. 
and the scriptures. Um, I, I myself caught a little off with the time change this morning, so I didn't get a chance to print them out, but you can look them up. And the Bible is full of references about being ready. Okay, maybe it doesn't say the word prepared as often, but it does say to be ready. Well, be ready for what? For stuff that may or may not happen. Okay, so um, Andrew, God bless you. So, um, what do we? I what? What does God say about being ready? Well, He says, "Be ready for His coming." First of all, so let's just. Before we talk about some kind of a natural challenge that might happen, weather related, so on, let's talk about the Lord Himself. Let's get established in our minds that the Lord said, Be ready. Are you, are you listening now? Be ready for you do not know. Okay, so two things. Number one, He's talking about preparing. Numbers two, He's talking about preparing for something that you don't know when it's going to happen or even if it will happen in your life. And yet, now you think about this. You think of the most radical prepper you know, and I think the Lord beats them, okay? Because he says, I want you to be ready for something that is absolutely going to happen eventually, but I'm not even going to tell you if it's going to happen in your life. But I want you to prepare anyway. Now, that's that's pretty serious uh, belief in preparation when the Lord says, okay, definitely this is going to happen someday, his return, but I'm not even going to tell you if it's going to happen in your life. And yet, you need to prepare as though it is. Why? Because living in a state of readiness is better than hoping when whatever comes, comes, you're just going to be able to manage your way through it. Okay? Really, the Lord doesn't do that. Now, <clears throat> so, is God a prepper? Yes, He is. <laughs> Not in the freaked out, uh, kind of like you see on the prepper shows. Not, not by a long shot. And you can always go crazy with anything. Listen, just because people go crazy with something doesn't mean you shouldn't do it in balance. You listening? And just because there's some people that don't do it at all and say it's unbiblical and unwise, really, it's just the opposite. The scriptures in Proverbs talk about it. It says the wise man sees these things, you know, coming down the road. And so he gets ready for them and so on and so on. Now, we all prepare to some degree or another. And I know this is different than what Jim normally talks about. I'm usually talking about, you know, super spiritual Bible things, drawing close to the Lord. And I really believe the ultimate act of preparation for anything is Psalm 27, 4. Not 24, 7, 27, 4. Where it says, one thing have I desired. That <clears throat> will I seek. That will I pursue. That will I prepare for that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. The ultimate act, in my opinion, of preparation is being ready day by day to meet with the Lord, to talk to him, to dwell with him, to walk with him. It's called intimacy. When you are prepared in that regard, other things then become, um, I, I don't want to say easy as that you don't have to do anything, but your heart is settled. Sometimes people prepare for things, the unknown, because really their heart is not settled about their eternal destiny. And so that manifests in the natural, if that makes sense. So they get fearful. What if I get sick? What if this happens? What if the economy crashes? What if, the, you know, what if some political uh, force takes away my rights? What about a foreign government trying to take over the country? You know, things that might seem way out there, but yet have happened to unsuspecting people many hundreds, if not thousands of times during the course of history. So it's not unreasonable to think about those things and think, okay, what would the Lord have me do? But there's always the one that goes crazy with it. And then there's always the one that is on the other side of the equation that refuses to do anything. Hi, Charmin. Hey, David. Nice to have you guys. So the contingency plan of the Lord begins with making sure you are right with the Lord. Okay, one of the most unexpected things that one should be prepared for is, of course, passing on. If you were to suddenly pass away, uh, have a heart attack, you know, God forbid, we don't like to talk about those things, but it does happen. It happens every day. Today, this day today, listen to this program, this will happen to someone. Someone will unexpectedly go home to be with the Lord or go into eternity. Let's put it that way, because there's heaven and hell. You want to be ready for that. 
You talk about preparation. That is, in most cases, the most unexpected event that happens to, to masses of people. And that is something that we, the wise, remember the story of the foolish and the wise virgins. That it was not in the context of death, but in the coming of Jesus. As five of them were, what? Wise. Okay, wise. And they did what? They prepared. Five of them were, what? Foolish. And they didn't prepare. So, establish it in your mind. It is the wisdom of the Lord to think ahead and reasonably make a plan in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So, people ask me all the time. They said, Jim, are you a prepper? No, I said, no, I don't like that label because it's taken on the crazy uh, thing. And, you know, I'm, if you want to call yourself that, that's fine. I believe in preparation, though. If that makes me a prepper, so on. I do. Now, let me just say this. How many of you have a pantry in your house? <laughs> no, literally. How many of you have a pantry? Raise your hand. Say, yeah, yeah, I got a pantry. How many of you can food? Okay. How many of you have a, a savings account? All of those are demonstrations of preparation. Okay, you save for the rainy day, for the unexpected. You can up food so that you can have something in store in case blah, blah, blah. So we, almost all of us, do some level of preparation. Unless you buy your food, hear me now, unless you go to the grocery store every single day and buy your food, and I know some people do, you know, <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm going to go buy breakfast and then I'm going to go and I'm going to buy lunch and then I'm going to go and I'm going to buy dinner. That's crazy. That's the flip side. That's the person that's not thinking ahead at all. And again, it's not spiritual to avoid thinking ahead. Okay. It's also not spiritual to freak out and think, I need six years with, worth of supply. I got to have a bomb shelter. You know what I'm saying? I, if the Lord were to impress you to do something like that, far be it from me to say otherwise. It's not my job to tell you what the Lord would tell you to do. One of the issues that people get motivated either by fear or the lack of wisdom, you know, and they simply don't talk to God about it. As in all things, okay, we make our plans. He directs our steps. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So in, in the art of preparation and being ready, we know we're supposed to be ready for the Lord. That takes thought that takes action, okay? And it's not just good motivate. I have a mo I'm motivated, but I don't do anything, okay? That's the Bible says that's dead works. Faith, that's faith without works, okay? Faith sounds really good, but I don't apply any works. That means it's dead. You can have dead faith. Did you know that? <laughs> so no matter what it is you're applying it to, having a contingency plan, you know, needs to go beyond just thinking about it. <clears throat> Lynn and I have on a number of occasions sat down and wrote down, okay, well, we know that it's wise to do this and we're supposed to seek wisdom. So we want to do what's wise. And so what do we do? Now, the difficult thing about planning for a contingency is you're planning for something that may never happen. So it's really kind of hard to get motivated sometimes by that. Now, again, we talked yesterday about if something touches you directly, typically, you know, you, yeah, you want to do something, you know, because now you're being touched by it. So recently here um, in uh, the place that we're at, <clears throat> we had a little uh, ice storm. OK, so Texas received a really bad, totally unexpected, massive ice apocalypse last year. And people actually died. We, I, you know, we laugh about it, but it was not a joke. People literally because, hear me, they were unprepared for it and just maybe just didn't think about it or god forbid thought it was stupid to do anything okay they died there were people that literally died because of it okay so there it's a kind of a serious thing so this year this year we show up right about the same time that that happened the year before in february and lo and behold another ice storm happens i don't really think most people thought it would happen again and yet it did much smaller scale but here's my point Something as simple as I had already got a generator, okay? And so we had that. But listen now, so I have a generator, but I didn't have anything to plug into it. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? So you got the gas, you got the generator, you got the oil to put in it. No heater to plug in, literally. 
death you could die because of you freeze to death because you got the generator but you didn't buy a $24 or a $48 electric heater to plug into the generator so my point is suddenly hey Jen God bless you so is that Jen yeah hey Jen suddenly uh I went like everybody does what happens when the snow falls everybody runs to the store to do what to buy shovels which they should have bought before but didn't to buy snow chains for their car, to buy de-icer. I mean, you name it. This is what we do. We wait till something happens. And then all of a sudden, it's not, nobody's saying you're a fear monger. Nobody's saying you're foolish to run to the store. And yet you kind of are because everybody's going to the store. <clears throat> we went out to get the heater. I thought, well, let's run to Walmart and buy a heater. No. Well, I'll go to Home Depot. No. So I'll go to Harbor Freight. No. Okay. No heaters to be found. Why? Because I waited until the event. Now, as serious as this can be in the natural, there is something way more important than the natural, and that's being unprepared for the return of the Lord. He said, not me, Jesus said, it will come as a snare. Okay, be ready. He said, watch in the morning, watch in the afternoon, always be watching and praying that you may count worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. For as a snare, it will come upon the whole earth. I didn't say that. He said that. The ultimate act of preparation is being prepared for the thing that Jesus himself said would come like a snare, his return on the whole earth. It's not going to be like everybody knows he's coming. Here's It's the countdown. It's like the New Year's, 10, 9, 8, 7. No, no, no. It's not going to be that way. Suddenly, he'll split the clouds. That is still true. Even though it has fallen out of favor and most preachers don't talk about it anymore, he still said he will split the clouds in a moment. He said in, in the day, again, I'm quoting Jesus here, okay? You don't have to believe me, but you, if you say you follow him, you kind of have to believe him. He said, the Son of Man comes in a day and an hour that you do not expect. That leaves you one option. Well, two. Hope that you're ready or plan to be ready. So when we talk about contingency, there are the most important contingency is his return. Either you going to him from unexpected or sudden death or him coming to you from unexpected and sudden return. That's one issue. That's the most important issue. If you never buy a can of soup, if you never get a, a heater or generator, <laughs> okay, you better make sure your soul is ready. Okay, because you know, you do not know when you're going to go. You do not know when he's going to come. Get ready today. Do not put it off another day. Wouldn't it be crazy if you heard this message and suddenly today was the day? Because today will be someone's end day. What if it were yours today and you heard this message and you just didn't take it seriously and the next thing you know, you're standing before the Lord and he says, Jim told you, I told you, why didn't you? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? All right. So just because you prepare for something in the net or in the spirit, you got your soul ready. That's, that is crucial. It's on a whole nother plane. That doesn't mean that you're done. Doesn't mean you shouldn't prepare for the future. People go to school. People go to college. People go to training centers. Okay. I know some of you right now who are watching, you're in training right now. For what? Well, you're preparing for the ministry. You're not just going, God's just going to lead me and I'm just going to walk into it. I mean, yes, he leads us every day, but he's probably leading you to get ready. If you want to do something for the Lord, get ready for it. <clears throat> now, you can also get in eternal preparation mode where all you ever do is go to school. All you ever do is train. All you ever do is stockpile. All you, you know, that's, that's, that's when you've gotten out of balance that way. So again, it all comes back to partnership. You need to come to the Lord and say, okay, you know, there are people who have been living with the understanding that preparation is just a smart, wise thing to do for centuries. Right here in this country, see, one of the disadvantages of where I have been raised, which is Salem, is that we have super moderate weather. Do you know that when we first started talking about preparation, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, 
um, we were really mocked. We were really come against, and we weren't freaking out at all. We were, I'm a, I was approaching people just like I'm right now. It was just not a thing, is what I'm saying. It was not a thing that was done in the Willamette Valley. Even though in Mississippi and North Carolina and the East Coast, where hurricanes and really extreme weather was common, over there, everybody's, oh yeah, well, of course, everybody prepares. That's just, everybody does, right? Only the really dumb people don't prepare. Why? Because they were constantly being touched by it. So see, when you're not touched by something, sometimes it's just like, yeah, that just doesn't seem like such a big deal. Well, now things, you know, every year things get a little more difficult, a little, you know, we've earthquakes increase, weather increases, blah, blah, blah. So it has touched people a little more than it has in the past. So what people in the Northwest used to say was fear-mongering. Now, most people, even the government, I mean, when the government steps up and says, yeah, you need a, a plan for executing your, your you know, you, or uh, how to execute your plan when an unexpected challenge comes, yeah, everybody ought to have that. So let's talk about a couple of practical things and then I'm gonna end. So we've covered the spiritual, you need to get right with God. Getting right with God means looking to the cross, looking to Jesus. I know I need to be saved. If you're messing around in sin, don't you dare tell yourself that God's okay with it because he's not. But he does love you and he wants to cleanse you and he wants you to walk with him in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> sorry. You ever, sorry, I was distracted. Squirrel, okay. I'm seeing the dog outside. You ever see those videos where the dog finds a branch? It's five times bigger than it. And that I just saw that dog carrying a branch. All right. Anyway, sorry. Um, some practical things. First of all, the very first thing after believing. Now, most of the time people will say number one issue is make a plan. I don't believe that. I believe number one issue is be convinced. Believe it's, that it's really important. And it's important not just to say, oh, yeah, I believe in that. It's important to actually do. Okay. So then go make a plan. Now, make a plan doesn't, I think, I don't know. I, I tend to kind of go sometimes, <laughs> how can I say it? These plans can become really, really overwhelming. Let's put it that way. So Linda and I have sat down with a piece of paper before and we just start writing. Okay, let's just say, let's just pick one thing. Let's just say what is likely to happen on the West Coast as opposed to the East Coast? Probably like a like an earthquake. Okay, <clears throat> let's say an earthquake's gonna happen. What do we wanna do? Or, you know, really bad storm and we lose power for a week. Um, well, I know people who have lost power for a week and it devastated their life. Anyway, so we say, okay, what would happen? Okay, so if there was an earthquake and let's say we lost electricity, and water and the ability to go to the grocery. Remember when the whole toilet paper thing happened? That's a real thing. People, they really freak out fast, okay? So <clears throat> having things set aside is really good, but start out making a plan. Your plan needs to be two or threefold. Number one, it needs to be about things that sustain human life, all right? Water, number one thing, water. People don't typically realize that the water systems in our, in most of our metropolitan areas depend upon the power grid. So just because you go to the water faucet and you don't think electricity has anything to do with it and that you can turn that water spigot on every time, that is not necessarily true. You need to have some level of water. Linda and I have, have uh, had various ways of doing that. Uh, easiest way to do, and it really is easy to do, is if you buy milk in jugs or you can go down to Walmart or something, you can buy a never used jug and you can fill it with water for less than a dollar, like 50 cents. Go down and buy five or six. The price, you know, sacrifice one latte and go, you know, get some water. Actually, you need a lot more than that. But here's the big issue. Most people, hey, Dean, es Esperanza, God bless you. Most people never start. And one of the issues about making a plan, a contingency plan, and being prepared 
is that we tend to make it so because it can be really extended. You can just once you start writing stuff down, <laughs> it can just the list gets longer and longer and longer and longer. And uh, so you wind up never starting because it gets so big. So go ahead and make the long list if you want. You know, the 500 things that you probably ought to have if everything were to go down. And then just start with number one. Do not do any more than the first two or three to start with. In other words, an emergency plan doesn't necessarily mean that you have to act like it's an emergency right now. You get what I'm saying? The very idea that you're planning for emergency sometimes causes people to feel a sense of urgency and they rush out and they try to do it all and they spend hundreds, if not thousands. That's the other thing. Most people say, I don't have any money. Okay, I know a lot of people. I don't have any money. Okay, first of all, stop saying that. First of all, you do have money. Okay, you can today, if you wanted to, go figure out a way to get 50 cents and get a, uh, a clean jug of uh, empty jug at Walmart and fill it with water. You can do that. There's always something you can do, but here's what we do. We give ourselves a hall pass by saying, I can't do it. Okay. I can't do this. There's everybody can do something. If you want to take one roll of toilet paper out of your house, you say, well, that doesn't mean anything. That's not, that doesn't No, it really, it does. It gets you started. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Okay. Take a single step. Okay. Or maybe your step is to clean out your closet or just to tape off a section in the corner of a room. This is my, this is my contingency plan corner. Just do something. Okay. Get started. Ask the Lord to help you move incrementally towards it. You will be surprised if you do that, how God will give you grace to do it <clears throat> because he's the one that said it's wise. Okay. Do not buy into the, the misconception that it's not biblical, biblical to prepare. As we, if you didn't hear the first part of this, you need to go back and listen to it. The Lord himself is the one that talks about being ready all the time, okay? When you build a tower, count the cost. That's thinking ahead. Uh, he talks about his coming, being ready. In the book of Proverbs, which he wrote, by the way, not a man, but he guided the man to write it, right? Wisdom. He said, a wise man looks ahead and sees what the possibilities and gets ready for him. Uh, what about the foolish man built his house on the sand? He's not thinking ahead. I mean, over and over and over and over. So don't buy the lie that being ready for the unexpected, anything from the unexpected return of the Lord to an unexpected natural, uh, you know, disaster or consequence that might happen. Don't buy the lie that it's unwise or you're not moving in faith when you do that. You really are. Okay. But don't go crazy either. And I can't define crazy for you. <clears throat> so the biggest thing, the most important thing, number one, believe. Number two, make a plan. Number three, start. Do something, anything. Trust me, anything is better than saying it's too much. I can't do it. All right. <clears throat> and then you will watch it grow and so on and so on. And uh, you can go. I mean, there's a whole thing. You can go deep with this. You can talk about how to cycle out your food. And but again, don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed. Just think about, okay, you know, all of you probably know people who got caught in a situation that they didn't know was going to happen. Here's three really good reasons to be prepared. Okay. Number one, so that you can take care of you and your family. That's a godly thing. Number two, you can even go beyond taking care of yourself and take care of other people. Wouldn't it be great in a, in a crisis situation, whatever it is, that you have like maybe Bibles to give? I know people that have a, a store of Bibles because they say if, if an earthquake were to happen or some difficult thing, COVID, anybody see COVID coming? Okay, not very many. Okay, they want to be able to minister to their friends and their neighbors, your neighborhood that looks to you as the person that has wisdom, godly wisdom and faith and so on. Okay, so that's number two, taking care of yourself and your family, helping other people. And here's the here's the, the antithesis, that you don't become the person that needs someone else's resources to get by. Okay, I would rather be on the end of the giving. It is more blessed to give 
than to be received. Can I say it this way? It is more blessed to be in a position to give and help others than it is to be in a position to need things to be given to you. Okay? You see how that's a godly principle? It really is wise. Now, again, we're talking about natural things, but we're also talking about spiritual. What would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? It really doesn't matter if you survive if you're not ready to meet the Lord. So that's always number one. It's in a class all by itself. Okay, there's a lot we could talk about. I'm going to end it a little bit early today. Thank you, those of you who chose to come on and watch live. I am so impressed by all of you. I'm not sure I'd be as good as you are. <laughs> of course, here I am. So anyway, thank you for listening. Um, please make sure and share this with other people. If you know people that watch, uh, and they say, hey, whatever happened to Jim Moore? He's always oh, still on, you know, he's an hour early. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your support. And by support, I mean your emotional support, your financial support, your prayer support. Um, you know, we are body, soul, and spirit, and we need support like everybody else. You know, um, we try to stay connected to people while we're out traveling. We don't want uh, to forget you and you don't we don't want you to forget us because we love you and we care about you all right so i want to end by praying for a young man uh his name is aaron aaron watches the program and uh i i'm not going to give his whole, whole name but he, uh, he and his wife just had a baby and uh wonderful congratulations and yet the child has some really serious medical issues and uh, we need miracle. We need a miracle for him and for his wife and child. The child's name is Lazarus. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. And uh, wow, what an appropriate name. You know, he's going to be a testimony. I believe that child is going to grow up to be a testimony of the Lord, a miracle child. Um, so anyway, would you do that? I told Aaron we'd pray for him today. Would you just take a second to bow your head and close your eyes? Or if you're driving or whatever, don't do that. But just pray with us. So pop up. Lord, you said if any two of us agree is touching any one thing, you would do it. We're asking for Aaron and his wife and Lazarus, little baby Lazarus. We're praying for miracles. Lord, I pray that his entire life will be a series of miracles. That he will see, that he will hear, that he will touch, that he will exemplify what it means to have the life of Jesus beating in his chest. Lord, we pray miracles, miracles, miracles to abound in Lazarus's life, starting right now with the immediate needs that he has while he's laying there in the hospital and then going on through the rest of his life. Let him be a testimony of the miracle working God. We believe you and we're believing with them in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening today. I know this is a shorty today, so there you go. You got time to spend with Jesus and uh, talk to the Lord. Hey, Cheryl, God bless you. So love you all. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay yeah um love you all and uh god bless you carmen i see you there in uh, the uk we love you and bless you and uh yeah i hope you have a great day today yeah hope you um hope you take to heart the things the lord is saying this you know uh i never know when i get up i i never know so anyway god bless you guys we love you and as always give yourself permission to have a great day god bless